when this show is over where it definitely feels for lack of a better word, snake bit, because you've got this, I don't know. Has it ever happened to where in back-to-back matches on pay-per-view folks get hurt like this? It's just less than ideal. Yeah. I don't know about starting off the show like that where no, it wasn't ideal, but we've had just shows where guys have gotten snake bit and it's one right after another getting hurt where you have a line at the doctor's outside of the doctor's room or, you know, shit. We've even had it where we've had to send guys to the hospital and you're having to wait for ambulances to show up, which makes you change your protocol on different things like that. So it's, uh, it's happened, not, you know, they're few and far between. And this was happening on an Island, uh, didn't help either. Well, I really appreciated looking back at this one because this is when I was sort of winding down some of my wrestling fandom. Uh, but this show had a lot of intrigue for me because it just felt weird, man. If they're, if they're doing two pay-per-views in the same month like this, I gotta be ready. And, uh, I'm glad it was because this was a good show and especially just for the main event. And I know the undercard sort of is what it is. And some of it in hindsight, you're like, what is that? But man, I was on fire for the Batista triple H storyline. And part of that was because, and this is by design, I hated triple H. Like I was ready for something different and Batista was that. And of course, later this year and present day, Batista taking his rightful place in the hall of fame, you gotta be pretty excited about him getting that, that great honor. Right? Yeah, I am because you know, Dave was somebody that walked in to my office with Alpha and Alpha said, oh my God, you gotta see this guy. He's a monster. And we took him right over to the. Uh, training facility over at the production television production and Tom was there and stuck him right in the ring with Tom and uh, I brought him into the studio and interviewed him that day and the rest as I say is history so yeah it's it's pretty pretty nice to when you have guys from beginning to end uh, and see them graduate into the Hall of Fame class he's deserving and I'm very happy that it's taking place now well, let's talk about what else triple H was doing. Uh, he landed a supporting role in the movie blade Trinity and it drew uh, 6.8 million in its second week. It dropped from second place in week one to fifth place in week two. So two weeks through it had uh, drawn 35.6 million at the box office. Uh, talk to me a little bit about triple H and his acting aspirations. It does feel like he popped up in a couple of movies here or there and then maybe he just decided, ah, that's not for me. Yeah. I don't know that I never saw blade Trinity three or whatever the fuck it is. Um, I do want to mention this. It did well. The, yeah, bu- the budget, good. the budget for this thing was 65 million. It made like 130 at the box office. So it was profitable. Yeah. I am just not a big Wesley Snipes fan. So I, but, but Hunter was, wasn't one of those guys. He would rather be, in the ring at this time, this stage of his career, I think he'd rather be in the ring, but at the, at the other end of that spectrum, he had an agent at this time that was telling him, Oh, you got to get out and do some other things. So he was experimenting, doing some other things. I think he did. He did this later on. He did, um, something with that little girl from modern family. And he did a few roles here and there, but I don't think that acting was his thing at the time. 